let me start maybe uh, i mean this is a tutorial session now so i uh, uh i am sharing what uh i think is uh are important aspects in this regard linked open data linked data and open data we will talk about this a little bit um, there might be other views on it there might be even better uh, approaches so i don't uh um i'm so i'm myself uh, also exploring this field um first a very short in uh, introduction uh because or, or maybe a summary uh, about the discussion during the last days i pretty much like the idea that semantic media wiki can be considered as something like a swiss army knife right you can do so many different things with it um so just as a short introduction um it is basically a collaborative data curation tool right so you are you are uh, you are collaboratively editing data um, you can also see it as a metadata tool so you have some content maybe texts that you have uh, in uh, uh, in media wiki and you add metadata to the, to those texts you can also an see it as an annotation tool for annotating data and texts you can see it as a knowledge graph interface right where people who want to provide data for a knowledge graph might uh, uh, interface with this knowledge graph. You can see it simply as a web-based database without any, any knowledge uh, aspect or any semantic aspect. Just uh, see it as a, a maybe something like a, a Microsoft Access for the web. Uh, it is an open source tool with a very vibrant community as we have seen in the last days. Uh, it uses semantic web standards, so that's nice for those who uh, think that semantic web standards are uh, the way to go. Um, it has the power of internal querying of data. That is important. So uh, you get uh, an internal query language, uh, an easy to learn one. Um, and it's, it is very important export friendly. So uh, it can import data, it can export data to other applications or uh, also to the web. And interesting also, uh, many of us know um, you can implement business logic inside your application. You, you can see it as a uh, rapid ap application builder where you can build applications without PHP programming, just by customizing actually uh, wiki pages, properties, templates, uh, category pages, and things like that. You can, you can build business logic on top of that. So this is interesting, but uh, most of you know that. So let's go uh, further on how uh, you can do linked open data. What does it even mean? Uh, it means that the idea is, uh, and it's not an idea anymore, it's a, it's a practice. Uh, the practice is to move from a web of documents where you have HTML documents that are linking to each other to a web of linked data. And you can see here, this is the linked uh, open data uh, uh, cloud. Uh, this uh, is a very famous picture. There's Wikidata and, and DPpedia are uh, in the center, but they are interlinking to all sorts of, of other data sources. Uh, by the way, this slide is from the open data support um, from the European uh, open data portal. So you might want to check this out. Um, and also this definition here, um, what is linked data? Uh, it is a set of design principles for sharing machine readable data on the web for use by public administrations, businesses, and citizens. Uh, and there are four design principles of linked data by Tim Berners-Lee. One is the uniform resource identifier for names of things. Well, okay, you can have that with MediaWiki. You have uh, web, web uh, pages. You use HTTP uh, URI so that people can look up those names. This can be done. If you use MediaWiki, you have, uh, uh, usually you have pages uh, uh, in your, uh, your eyes, uh, where some something comes along. But this is not the only idea. When someone looks up a URI, you should provide useful information using the standards RDF or Sparkle. So this is where SMW comes in, um, because that's what SMW does. If you have uh, SMW, uh, it will do that for you. Uh, and you should include links to other URIs so that uh, they can discover more things. Also, this can be done with SMW, and this is what we will be talking about today. Um, there's also a very famous five-star schema of linked open data, you know, uh, also by Tim Berners-Lee. Um, one star means make your stuff available on the web. 
in whatever format, just uh, choose an open license because it's important uh, if you want to reuse data uh, that you find on the web, you must have some license information so that you know, am I even allowed to reuse this data? So this can be done in MediaWiki quite nice uh, because you have this, um, uh, you can even uh, indicate what license uh, your, your MediaWiki that is on the web is. Uh, but then for the other stars, you really need semantic media wiki, uh, make it available as structured data in, instead of just text. So Excel, uh, instead of some image scan or table or something like that, we have an ex Excel export format in semantic media wiki. Even better use non-proprietary formats. So CSV instead of Excel in semantic media wiki, CSV export was there before the ex Excel export actually. Uh, use URIs to denote things so that people can point at your stuff. So this is important. I will go uh, into this in more detail. Uh, and link your data to other data to provide context. So this is also something that Semantic Media Wiki is designed to do. Uh, yeah, so what's the difference between linked data and open data? Um, open data is data that can be freely used, reused and redistributed by anyone, subject, uh, only at most to something, uh, an attribution. So this means that open data, uh, data can be published uh, under an open license. It can be published without linking to any other sources. So open data does not really mean uh, that it necessarily links somewhere. It just means uh, make, your, make your information and your data uh, freely available. Linked data um, means that uh, it can, Link to your eyes, what we just what we just said. So uh, this doesn't necessarily mean always that it must be open data. You can use linked data in your uh, uh, in your organization. Uh, your secret data can link to other vocabularies, for example. So you can you can use this for your internal knowledge graph applications, for example. So there is a difference there. Uh, so let's talk about open data first. Um, you see here, yeah, the open data insights, yeah, something like that. There is an open data community that has a little bit overlooked the capabilities, I guess, of Semantic Media Wiki in this regard. So I'm, I'm trying to, to bridge this gap here a little bit. Um, so if you have your own, uh, your own wiki, you can decide, is it going to be a closed wiki that is, you know, maybe all, all, all running in, in, our own, uh, in our own intranet, or is it on the web? Uh, am I allowing other other people to view the content or, or edit the content? This is up to you. Uh, the more open you are, uh, the better, I would say. Uh, but it depends, of course, on your use case. So basically, what the, the first thing to make it open is make your semantic media wiki readable by everyone. Editing can still be uh, restricted. You might not want uh, just because it is it, uh, it is a wiki. You might not want the whole world to edit your wiki. So you can make the information available, readable by everyone, but editing should, can be restricted to users that you know. Uh, then you can include an open license. Um, there is even uh, this uh, license information on the footer of, of every uh, MediaWiki page. You know, there are some, uh, some, some easy things that you can do how to set this. Um, you can say it's, it's public domain or it's a, a Creative Commons license or whatever. So you should do that because people should know uh, that view your wiki, are they allowed to reuse your content and your data? Uh, make it easy for users to access your data. So what does Semantic Media Wiki do? It puts a link to the RDF representation. There's a special page that's called a Special Export RDF. Uh, and uh, it will do that automatically in the HTML. So uh, for the RDF export, uh, you don't have to care about this. If you use Semantic Media Wiki for structured data, uh, the, in the HTML of, of your wiki page, there will be a link uh, to the RDF export with the name of the current page you're on so that uh, other people can see, oh, well, there's structured data here. I can, I can reuse that. What you can do also, and I would uh, recommend that uh, you create an RDF dump so you can, we can not on a per page base, but you can really create a complete RDF dump of all your data in your wiki. Uh, and this RDF dump could be then maybe linked in some open data portals that are out there. 
Uh, so um, you can also move your content to the open to some open data portals and say, okay, this is the complete RDF dump of my wiki. Um, so here you have some resources where you can find more uh, uh, information. There's a maintenance script dump RDF, and you can maybe once a week or once a day, uh, it depends uh, on, on how frequent your your data will change. You can you can uh, let this this uh, script create your RDF dump. By the way, and this RDF dump also can be imported easily to triple stores if you are interested in this. Um, you can indicate also for the users that don't don't know so much maybe about RDF, uh, various other exporting formats. Uh, there are certain result formats uh, dependent also on the content. For example, um, if you have personal data about persons and then their contacts, there's a vCard format. If you have time-based data, you could there's an iCalendar format. Uh, if you have data about books, uh, uh, it may be uh, BibTeX. Bip if you have geographical data, KML. Also, they're all result formats that are there out of the box. So if you have uh, data in this regard, then you can easily provide also for the for the average user in your wiki, you, you can uh, indicate, you know, here, uh, please click uh, and uh, for an iCalendar uh, download of the of the calendar data that I have in my wiki, uh, and people can reuse that. And of course, you can uh, provide the formats that are very commonly used in in the open data uh, environment, like CSV or JSON. Uh, that's also out of the box there, or as I mentioned, RDF. Um, and you can also provide. Uh, export pages in your wiki where you will explain okay here you can export all the all the information about our, pub our publications in in bib text and json format or whatever so you can guide your users towards how can you how can they best reuse your data uh, one example of this just to give you some idea this is an example you can see in the in the fina wiki it's about uh, it's about ancient uh, scholarly communication actually and letters so this is uh, a literature uh, entry of um, we have an author a title and a publication year and so on and just below that you might want to indicate you, you can have a bib text or you can have an rdf or you could put here a csv and this also this all would link to an basically ask query that would give you the result format for for this page or uh, if you have lists uh, you can also say, okay, below in, in this list, there's a, a, a filtered list of all documents. And below this list, you can provide some export, uh, CSV or RDF export, or you could you could have more here. It's a little bit an effort to to, to provide this, but uh, it's, it's convenient for the users. You can see this in action maybe here. Okay, so the first thing is make it easier, easy for the users to understand uh, uh, that they can uh, and are invited to use and reuse your content. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is how to link to external identifiers. Um, it's actually quite easy um, because, uh, as you might know, uh, in Semantic Media Wiki, you have so-called property pages. So you will set up a property can set up a property here at the example Wikidata ID. Uh, it is of type external identifier and, and it has a URI uh, where the dollar sign now indicates what should go behind this URI. So you basically uh, define a page, a wiki page that's called property Wikidata ID. You assign this data type. For every property, you have to assign a data type. It's out of the box, it would be of type page. Um, it could be type text or type date. In this case, you would assign it as has type external identifier. You just put this uh, on the page and you put, uh, uh, you make another annotation that's called external formatter URI. And then you have here the, the Wikidata uh, URI uh, and the dollar one indicates what this ID should come here. Uh, and now you can have these Q numbers here. Uh, you see Pope Paul III has this Q number in, in Wikidata. And if I click now here, I would click now here in the FINA Wiki, I would be redirected directly to the Wikidata entry. Uh, of course, this can be done not only with Wikidata, you can do this with uh, GND, a very uh, famous uh, German uh, called Gemeinsame Normdatei, so a, a, a identifier for 
mainly I think persons and, and places and things like that uh, or many other identifiers you 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 name it there's a lot a lot around uh, and you can link to those external identifiers from your wiki uh, maybe a short excursion there is a, a feature inside semantic media wiki that has been a little, a little bit forgotten i would say uh, and i advocate now to to consider this again uh, there is something in semantic media wiki called service links it was actually implemented f first with the coordinates question so if you have coordinates uh, and you have this browse interface here for semantic media wiki and you'll see you now here the properties of the page for vienna and you see, you see it has geographical coordinates so the the property has coordinates is of data type geographical coordinate and it has the service links so you can and then you see this question mark here and you can now look up this coordinate in google maps in OpenStreetMap, or in other services that you might provide using the service links so i think that's really really neat uh, and this should be i think uh, expanded how is this done for this example for example you, if if you we talked about our property page wikidata id if you provide the wiki text provides service wikidata that's the only thing you have to do there and then you have to provide a uh, another page in the wiki in the media wiki namespace to to basically uh, create a page that's called media wiki smw service wikidata because that's the name that you provided here so you have to create this page and just you just add on this page wikidata and then this is the name that will be displayed here uh, and then you just add really uh, again the, ur the url to uh, the wikidata lookup and if you now you would uh, have in the wikidata id if you would ho uh, uh, hover over this question mark here it would say wikidata and you could click on it and it would again lead you to wikidata so there's a little bit of re uh, redundancy between service links and and external uh, uh, uri um, but uh, the, the main disadvantage i would say is it currently it only works in the special browse interface so in this interface and uh, you would see usually for example in the fina wiki i am hiding this interface because i want to provide the uh, uh, information about a place or a person in the way I want it and not with this browsing interface so um, I cannot make use of this but I think it would be very nice to have something like this uh, again also usable outside of the browsing interface so but that was just an, uh, a short excursion um, another thing that was talked about also yesterday is the question how, how, how can you reuse external vocabularies so let's take a simple example again um, there is the so-called FOF ontology. It's called friend of a friend. So it basically says something like, this is about a person. This is probably going to be about the context of a person like emails or, uh, uh, or uh, organization the, the person works for or things like that. This is defined in the FOF vocabulary. Um, and you can reuse this. Uh, how do you do that? you again have to add as a, a wiki page in the media wiki namespace so you call it media wiki smw import fof you, you can also uh, have predefined um, lists here and it basically says okay what is it it is the fof vocabulary it has a link here and it's called friend of a friend and then you have these pairs here of vocabulary items so you say okay you have the fof vocabulary homepage and the a homepage must be of tab URL, of course. So this is defined actually in the in the vocabulary. Uh, the list of vocabularies here is quite short. Um, uh, it can be expanded. So if because the full vocabulary or other vocabularies can be very large, so you, you basically just have to name those here that you are using or reusing in your properties. So you say uh, I have uh, maybe pages about persons, and I want to have their personal home pages and their names and their uh, their phone number or whatever uh, so you you add those vocabulary items that you need and this will define the type uh, or the property type um, so and what you're doing now on your property uh, uh, pages so you have for example a, a, a property page that is called last name because you want to call it that way semantic media wiki lets you call your properties any way you like so you add a page in the property namespace that is called last name 
Uh, and there you just add this wiki text imported from FOV family name. So here, Semantic Media Wiki knows, okay, uh, this is from FOV vocabulary here. Uh, and it looks up family name and it says, okay, family name is of type text. So you will get uh, the property of type text and uh, it will, uh, it will uh, reflect this in the RDF output. So anybody who will use you will see will look in, in your RDF will see that okay your property last name which could be called in German Familienname and you maybe in English would not know what a Familienname is but in RDF it would say it is a full family name so this also makes uh, a lot of sense to do it this way. Um, there's further uh, uh, information on semanticmediawiki.org how to import uh, vocabulary. Um, there is, uh, yesterday there was this talk about ontology to, to SMW that was very interesting that uh, showed how you can do that in a, in a non-manual way. I'm doing this manually here, you know, but uh, they provide some uh, met uh, methodology on, on pushing ontologies into Semantic Media Wiki. Very nice. You should check it out. Um, uh, the talk yesterday also will be uh, on the YouTube channel of Semantic Media Wiki probably by next week. So this can be done, uh, um, and I think it should be done this way. Okay, something also, if you if if you want others to reference to your pages, um, it's actually a good idea to have uh, unique IDs because uh, your your page name, Pope Paul the Third, could maybe change. So then everybody has to update the links uh, to your pages. Um, so how will you do it? Well, uh, the great thing is MediaWiki already can do it because there is a MediaWiki page ID uh, and that can be used for this. So how do you do it? You define a property. For example, here I define the property FINA ID. I assign it a, uh, a data type text. I say, okay, this FINA ID is just a, a text. Uh, and uh, in my template uh, that I use uh, for every for in this case every page actually uh, I set this property with the page ID so this is the set statement of semantic media wiki it sets the property FINA ID that I declared here and it sets it with the value of the magic word page ID uh, because every uh, every uh, page in media wiki gets assigned a unique page ID and this will not change even if you change the name uh, I heard, I have not experimented with that, that the only way it might change is when you delete a, p a page and then you you uh, pull it out of the deletion log again. So this, then it might change. But if you move the page, uh, that means you assign it a, a completely different name, uh, this ID will not change. And if you, and then you can provide a link uh, like this, yeah, with the question mark cur ID uh, instead of index uh, PHP or so, and you then uh, have this ID, the MediaWiki ID, and this will link actually to the page of, I think it was Pope Paul III. So there you have your, your unique IDs that are independent of language, and uh, this is all out of the box there. You just have to use it. Uh, yeah, for the magic word page ID, there is uh, some, uh, some details here uh, how you can use it. I think it's a, a very nice way to do it. And let's have another short uh, excursion. Uh, if you happen to use uh, page forms uh, extension, um, uh, you can you can have a very nice query interface for that. So what I do and I, uh, is I usually set another property page ID in this case uh, that is now of data type page. Why? Because I want to be able to click on these links, um, and I use the query forms uh, function from for, of the page forms extension for an ID lookup. So you have this nice FINA ID search. So if any human who might not uh, really know uh, about this RDF stuff sees, okay, there was this FINA ID 10, 4, 15. I want to know what is it. You can click here on show item and you would see it is the ID of Pope Paul III. So now uh, you, if you ever have clients who say, I need unique IDs, uh, I need some kind of a, a ticket numbering system or whatever, it is all there. You just have to, to use it. It is all there without programming. You just need to use what is there for the page forms extension. Here is the link on how to create so-called query forms. Okay, that was a, 
uh, an excursion, a short one. And now uh, another thing is, um, of course, Wikidata we mentioned already. Wikidata is a great uh, place for uh, for handling those uh, external identifiers. So here you can see um, the way I just learned that because um, uh, someone else proposed for the Vienna History Wiki. Um, there is a property proposal that has been accepted. What does it mean? It means that uh, uh, there is now a Wikidata property called Vienna History Wiki ID. So for example, you have a famous person in a Wikidata uh, from Vienna, and that would, could also be in the Vienna History Wiki. Then you can say, okay, there is a, this unique ID in the Vienna History Wiki, uh, links from Wikidata to the Vienna History Wiki. Um, so if you want to achieve that, uh, you have to talk to the Wikidata community. Basically, you have to make some uh, a property proposal. And I did that here with the FINA Wiki ID. Um, of course, I, I think not every uh, uh, external Wiki will, will be, let's say, qualified or so to, to have that. Uh, because you know, if, you, if, you, if you are publishing your your, your private toy collection or something on, on the web, you know, Wikidata will say, well, well what is the use maybe? But here, uh, in this case, I made this proposal and other people can support it. I say, you know, it's, it's, about, um, it, it's about ancient uh, uh, scholars um, and uh, it is uh, in, a, in a very open license, uh, CC0, or, or no, it's a, a public domain license. So. Uh, this is really for everyone to use and reuse, and I, I pro um, propose this this property. So uh, this ho hopefully will get created, uh, and then uh, once it is created, we can cross-reference each other. So uh, to go even more into Wikidata, I'm just learning this uh, uh, as I as I speak. Actually, so there's uh, something that's called mix and match. Um, you can have you, here. You have this manual for this. Uh, what does it mean? Um, um, I, I've learned that the difference between reconciliation and mix and match is the following. Reconciliation, you, there's a, a, another service for that you do. If you say, I have in my wiki uh, a list of famous persons and I want to, to check well, which of those persons are also in, in Wikidata and uh, maybe I want to get their Q number from Wikidata or their GND number from Wikidata that they have and I want to to you know match, uh, to uh, reconcile this my data set with, with what is in Wikidata. Mix and match on, on the contrary is better if you have these this properties uh, available already and you want to uh, now that uh, maybe in the FINA wiki, we will have this, this uh, property connection to Wikidata. I want to push all, all, all the, the, the ancient uh, scholars to Wikidata. Uh, how can I do it with this mix and match feature? And uh, I'm pretty certain I haven't really tried it out. Uh, I didn't find the time uh, during, during the last weeks, uh, but there's the so-called template file result format in Semantic Media Wiki. So it should be, and I'm pretty sure it is possible to provide exact uh, a mix and match file because um, uh, the, the, the mix and match importer says, well, basically you can provide a text file, a tabular tabs, uh, text file, and that can import uh, loads of data. And this can be done, uh, I think, out of the box with a call, with a template file format where you would specify exactly the mix and match format that is needed. Um, and I will do that. I will try that. And once I have this, I will uh, uh, promote this on semanticmediawiki.org for you to reuse this mix and match uh, approach. Uh, another thing that not maybe not everyone knows. I was quite puzzled when I first heard about that. I mean, um, in the in the library scene, maybe the, everybody knows this, but uh, basically it happened like this uh, in the Vienna History Wiki. People from Germany asked us, uh, "Can you provide this beacon file?" And I said, "What the beacon file? I mean, I, I have RDF, I have JSON. What is a beacon file?" So I learned that it is a a very simple text file, but it has been uh, around for a long time that basically says, okay, uh, here is a GND number uh, and here's another GND number. And he, uh, and this is what, uh, what the name is in my, in my wiki. And uh, this is the, uh, the URI uh, where uh, uh, this, this text file 
uh, where, where, where this name uh, can be found. So it's very, I would say compared to RDF and so it's very primitive, but uh, it seems to be widely used. So um, you can you can have easily such a beacon file from your wiki in case uh, anybody asks you for that. So why not? You can also use the template file format for doing this. Okay. Ah, I was I'm running out a little bit of, of uh, out of time, so I try to try to speed up. But uh, we are almost done. Reconciliation I just mentioned. Um, uh, I will not go into too much details, but semantic reading wiki can out of the box provide result formats like RDF, JSON, and CSV. These can be accessed directly in Open Refines. And Open Refine, you can pretty much paste. Uh, a URL of, those, of, 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 of the JSON or the CSV, and it will import your data from your Semantic Media Wiki instance into OpenRefine. And there you can do this reconciliation process that means uh, to look which data in your data set matches with Wikidata. So you can see here there's a person and the reconciliation in OpenRefine will suggest you different persons and you, you would have to manually or partly manually say, okay, this is, uh, this is correct. And then you would be able to re-import the data via the data transfer extension. So you could re-import the data that you have reconciled and, and say, okay, I now want to add the Q numbers or the GND numbers that I found in Wikidata. I want to import it into my Semantic Media Wiki instance. This can be done. Of course, this is a little bit cumbersome. So if you talk about the future of knowledge sharing, there are some ideas maybe to be followed up during this conference or also in, in, the, following, uh, uh, in the following weeks. Uh, I, also, uh, I already talked about this reuse of the service links idea. I would like to see that. Um, Semantic Media Wiki could, in my opinion, use the reconciliation API of Wikidata, so you don't need um, uh, Open Refine anymore. So you don't need to have this process of exporting it to, to Open Refine, then reconciliation, and then re-importing it. Why not doing it from within Semantic Media Wiki? That would need some kind of uh, extension, and I would like to do that maybe next year. So uh, I'm not a programmer; I cannot do it. But if you're interested in in having this capability of reconciling your own data with Wikidata, uh, please reach out to me and maybe we can we can join forces in, in making this work. And also something that I, I think is, is important, you know, the flexibility of Semantic Media Wiki providing a property declaration could be used to map to Wikidata properties. I showed you this, uh, I mean, this is possible already to assign a Semantic uh, Media Wiki property country to P17 can be done easily with imported from OWL equivalent class P17. So this is this can be done. The problem is it only changes the RDF output from a, from a semantic media wiki point of view. It does not yet trigger any other features. But of course, if I know that my property country is now P17 in Wikidata, I could do all sorts of things uh, actually in uh, inside uh, semantic media wiki with that knowledge. Um, so uh, this could be the first place to start. Uh, and I would li actually like to see also something like pushing data to Wikidata or other uh, repositories should be doable inside of Semantic Media Wiki on a per entry base. I say, okay, I curated now my entry about Vienna. It's great now. And I push it now to Wikidata or part the, the part that match maybe, or maybe also uh, from an ask query, you know, say, okay, uh, show me all the pages uh, that have been approved now and push them, you know, uh, uh, to Wikidata, something like that. So that are some ideas. Thank you very much. I ran out of time. I'm so, I'm sorry, uh, Robert, but we have some time, so you don't have to cut short. Uh, please contact me. And I'm now looking at the chat. Are there any questions? Yes, from Andrew. It is important to mention that the config option capital links is false is important so that property names don't become capitalized okay yeah that's interesting uh i, I was, was not aware of that um okay the page id is also different when you import wiki content from one wiki to another one and have deleted pages in the destination wiki okay so yeah as i mentioned page ids and page deletions are maybe a problem to the linked data part, how difficult is it to replace attributes like names with open vocabularies once own attributes are in place? 
Does this need? Oh yeah, that's that's a, a very good question, Tilo. Thank you. Um, that's the real beauty of Semantic Media Wiki. So the use case here is you have uh, you have uh, your property Nachname uh, that you call Nachname and uh, you set it of type text. At any later place uh, in time, you can see, okay, I don't want to have it of type text. I want to have it of type page. And now you can link your Nachname to the entries uh, and it will become a, uh, a link to a internal wiki page. And at a and any later time, you can also say, oh, I should link my Nachname to fourth last name. Uh, and you just have to re replace the internal property assignment of type text with the one I showed you with the external uh, uh, external identifier. So this is really easy. And this really demonstrates the flexibility of semantic media. Wiki.